but uh, we will uh, pop back on this PowerPoint and uh, what uh, what are we looking at as far as uh, slide number that that uh, we got stuck on? You stuck. You got stuck on twenty one. All right, let's head to twenty one then. All right, so here we are um, on slide twenty one. Everyone getting this? We're good. Yep. Good. Yep. It's good. Excellent. Uh, this is the uh, calcium uh, compensation depth that we uh, were discussing. And calcium, you can see above 4,500 meters is abundant, but below 4,500 meters is absent. And that's because uh, calcium dissolves under great pressure. So when you pass this threshold of cold and pressure, it dissolves. Here, it's a little more shallow because it's colder. Here, it's even more shallow because it's colder. So calcium carbonate dissolves in cold temperatures or great pressure. So uh, below the calcium carbonate uh, compensation depth, you get a lack of calcium carbonate and a dominance of uh, silica or siliceous ooze. So that's what the CCD is that I was uh, talking about. Uh, can you guys see the next slide, 22 here? Yep. Okay, so we're back in business is what you're telling me. Fantastic. Yes. yes. So here, that's what I said, the White Cliffs of Dover. Look at the White Cliffs of Dover. They are expansive calcium carbonate deposits, mostly foraminifera, uh, foraminifera. Uh, here's how you spell it, foraminifera. Uh, so the White Cliffs of Dover are huge deposits of once living organisms. Uh, so here's the calcium carbonate or main, major organisms are foraminifera. Living, you see the uh, amoeba-like body with, uh, it actually radiates protoplasm and that little shell, it's tests in there. Here's the test for a fossilized one. And then this is your coccolith that we looked at uh, in the beginning. When you look at a deep sea core and you get a sample, this is what it looks like. It's all hodgepodged out and you have to separate it. And you got a lot of the foraminifera here and some other fossils. And uh, you use, you extrapolate out what there is uh, to what climate it was at that particular period of time. Here's coccoliths and their ooze. And there's a cool guy, the pteropods, they're little snails, and they stick out their foot and open it up like a wing and ride on ocean currents. So pteropod uh, is wing foot, wing foot. They're little snails that uh, are very tiny little snails uh, ride around on currents. The siliceous ooze are mainly diatoms and radiolarians. Here's diatoms. And then that's a cliff made of diatoms. This one is in Nevada. And I briefly mentioned some of the economic uses for this diatom because uh, it's made of the same stuff, glasses. It's used in natural pest control. Uh, when, I, when I kept chickens, I bought it and mixed it in with the soil and put it on the floor of the chicken coop because um, ants, uh, you know, insects, I mentioned, breathe in through their sides. They have little holes called sphericals. They don't use a mouth. And they breathe this stuff in and it cuts up their uh, tubes and they, they die. So it's a natural pest control and not a poisonous one. Uh, didn't work great, but it worked better than plain soil, I guess, if I'm gonna be honest. Uh, the radiolarians, they're made of glass as well and they are more like the amoeba. But so the, the silica, the, the ones, the most common are diatoms, they're very common. And then radiolarians are the second most common. Our hydrogenous sediments that precipitate out, uh, they are uh, manganese nodules. Uh, evaporites, like salts, uh, come from this evaporation basin, and then we mine it economically. Uh, sea salts is a little more expensive because 
Um, you have to extract the salt from the water, mainly by heat. It takes a great deal to evaporate water. Uh, so our, when you buy pure sea salt, uh, then it's more expensive than if you buy the, the mined, commercially mined salt. Similar in characteristics, although the sea salt, uh, great chefs and stuff tend to use that because it has a lot of the micro, uh, the, the, the micro uh, salts and the micronutrients that a commercially mined, and then you have to you know pull out the other minerals. So it's basically just sodium chloride crystals or halite when you get it uh, mined, whereas the sea salt has a more complete profile. Uh, our olite sands, the white sand beach, here, white sand. Here's a little image of some uh, olithic sand. This would be your little shells or foraminifera. Here's your minerals, your quartz. That was going off about uh, parrotfish poop. Really in the Caribbean, uh, you have your coral reefs and then the parrotfish eat the coral reef and then uh, defecate it out. And all that sand gets washed up and it makes these beautiful white beaches on like Cancun or or, uh, you know, beautiful white uh, Bahamian beaches are basically made from the, uh, the, the, the fish. It's biologic, uh, chopping up the, uh, the coral and then pooing out the uh, sediment. Whereas, you know, we have pink beaches in, 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 in Bermuda that comes from uh, slightly pink uh, foraminifera shells that get washed up uh, like this. These are some little foraminifera and then the the minerals mixed in. So you get an organic beaches as well. St. Augustine has crushed shells, so it's an organic beach. So, you know, you got mineral beaches. Uh, up north, the beaches are coarse sand and they're all erosional. And then, you know, in areas where there's coral reef, you get white and pink sands. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me again. So you can have organic beaches as well. So, you know, we study, we study stratigraphy, the study of layers here. But we study mainly uh, with core libraries uh, when we study uh, sediments or seismic, which the oil industry uses to find uh, oil. Uh, so here uh, we mentioned, and I said it a few times, the age of the ocean floor at, at its oldest is 200 million years old. So when you're here, you're having brand new sediments here at the ocean ridges. And when they subduct on the other side of the ocean, it takes 200 million years for that ocean floor to be destroyed in the oldest parts. In other parts, it might be quicker. Uh, so the oldest areas are here around the Marianas Trench. Uh, and that is 200 million years old. So our uh, profile of the ocean floor and all the sediments, the sediment library, if you will, is incomplete. Uh, we study historical information. A lot of it is ancient climatology, but really why we study sediments is for natural resources. Uh, placer deposits, a natural resource uh, eroded from land. A crude oil and natural gas are made in sediments and hydrates, which we already touched upon. Uh, here's a, a map of some of the famous placer deposits where you get gold or silver, tin, chromium, uh, eroding from land and building up. So uh, they're mined for those natural resources. Uh, petroleum, petroleum, interestingly, petroleum uh, builds up. I'll show right here first. Here's where it builds up. Uh, we have these uh, non-porous rocks that are deposited on top of organic sediment and you get your gas, oil, and water separate out as the organic sediments decay. So you have these areas, and then on, you know, if there's uplift, you can drill on land and get them, or you'd have to set up an ocean rig and drill and pull them out. But they form from our biogenous sediments. And uh, our petroleum, petroleum, mostly carbon, hydrocarbon, so you see in them the impurities. Pure petroleum, uh, crude oil is separated out into its various constituents. Uh, a lot of the uh, aromatic hydrocarbons come right off, and that's what natural gas is. Uh, once you uh, break the seal on it, 
Uh, much like when you open up a Coke, all the gases escape. So the first step is trapping those hydrocarbons when you discover oil. And you can see how seismic profiling could, could actually uh, go because you send down seismic, you can find liquid and, 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 and then you can tell what type of rocks are present and you, then you can do some exploratory drills. So seismic profiling uh, and the study of stratigraphy is very important. So the hydrocarbons come off of the crude oil and then, and as the oil uh, is separated, if it's a spill, the hydrocarbons come off, poison a lot of birds, and then the sun bakes it and the, uh, a lot of it um, dissolves out into the water and eventually it sinks as tar and coats the seafloor uh, with a spill. What we do though, is we separate it out uh, in a refinery and pull out the different uh, asphalt, for instance, uh, gas for cars, uh, rocket fuel, uh, the raw materials to produce nylons and other synthetic fibers, all that is separated out at a refinery. So the first step would be getting the resource, in this case, dr drilling. Where is it located? Uh, of course, our Gulf Coast has a lot of oil. These are our gas fields and our oil reserves. We do have oil also uh, in other parts, but notice how much of it is actually tied to the ocean. Uh, so your first oil, your crude, uh, and then the volatiles come off, and then it turns to a class V, uh, and then they're a little less toxic because those volatiles are, are quite toxic, the gases that come off. And then you know it's exposed to sunlight, you get some evaporation, it, uh, it's exposed to water, and the oil gets heavier and stickier, and then they turn more solid like a tar, and then it sinks. So uh, at the refinery, though, you separate it out where almost half goes into gasoline, and then you get jet fuels and other uh, products here, diesel, other products. And then finally, you get your asphalt and uh, fibers. So really, when you look at a typical 42-gallon barrel, and that's what they, they deal with, barrels of oil you hear, the price of oil per barrel, it's, it's 42 gallons. And this is what is made from it at the refinery. So about half of the oil that we refine goes to gasoline. And then the other half goes to other things like heating oil, uh, coal and oil used to produce electricity or heat, diesel fuel. Uh, here's your other, which would contain synthetic fibers and other uh, petroleum-based compounds, asphalt for all the roads and stuff. So pretty much that's what goes into uh, our use of oil. Methane hydrates, we, we also discussed methane hydrates. That wraps up our PowerPoint. Uh, again, I apologize for the technical difficulty, uh, but fortunately, I was able to save uh, a good portion of the lecture. Tonight, you do have a um, discussion forum due, and of course, your summaries of the uh, margins in a uh, lesson plan type uh, handout. Again, uh, I apologize for uh, the inconvenience, but I also applaud all of you for hanging in there. Uh, we were able to cover today's lesson. Uh, the video will be partial, unfortunately, but uh, that's uh, we, we kind of made it through unscathed. Are there any questions uh, about today's lesson that I can help clear up? I, I have questions about the homework. What do we have? Well, to hold do? on, hold on. We'll start with the lesson. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I'll move on to uh, assignments. But let's start with the lesson. Are there any questions on sediments or today's lesson? Both parts of the video are going to be posted. Uh, I, the first part, I don't know if the first part will be posted. I don't know if it's saved to my computer. 
I know the second part will. Uh, we can uh, do a, when we do review uh, on Monday, uh, we can touch upon anything you might have confusion with. But uh, I don't know whether we could save the first half of lecture before my computer froze. I got a question. Yeah, yes. Um, this terogenous, uh, is that the- Terogenous? Terogen yeah, terogenous. Yeah, you know the term Genesis uh, is even in the Bible, it means made from or the beginning. And sure. Terra means earth, so it's Terra genius. And the question I'm raising is, in the textbook, the components of what you described for Terra genius is listed under lithogenius. That's is that fine. the same? Litho means earth and Terra means earth. Okay, that's, that's the discrepancy. Yeah, I uh, when I was in college, I was always taught terogenius. So you know, over my uh, thirty years of working in an ocean, I've always called it Terra. But litho is the same as Terra. So I'm got that cleared up. Okay, no other questions on today's lesson. Okay, someone had a question on tonight's assignment. Uh, which one of the uh, assignment, if you want to ask now, uh, others may benefit. Yeah, I want to ask uh, what do they have to finish today? Oh, well, I mean, check your calendar. It's on there. You have a discussion forum and uh, the educational handout. Okay, it should finish today. Okay. Thank yes, you. yes, it's due tonight or else it won't be accepted. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hey, uh, Jalen. Uh, Jalen, what could, how can I help you? Yeah, the, uh, I'm having trouble with the educational handout. So all I had to do is just like- Well, the instructions the are on the web page. Yeah. So, and we did, we did get briefed, so yeah. please continue your question. I have saw the video of you telling us what to do on the assignment, but right, I'm still having trouble. I mean, I can at least draw the margins for both the Atlantic and Pacific, and write details of it both sides. Okay. That's all I do, plus the reference? Uh, that That's a good one, yeah. I mean, every, I, I can't, I don't want to stifle people's creativity, so I don't want to make everyone do the exact same turn in. So I gave you an outline of what I wanted and just make sure that you include all of those elements, but then you can add your own touches. Am I, again, am I what? Images, you say? Images, yeah, illustrations. Uh, you can draw, you can find it on the internet, uh, however you do it, uh, but you should include diagrams for sure. Diagrams. Yeah, illustrations, diagrams, images. Okay. Okay? Yes. Thank you. No, no problem. I got one question, Professor. Yes, sir. In, the, in, in your orientation, you invited us. Oh, sorry. What was that? You in your orientation, you invited us to do a tour of Fort DeSoto Park. Right. Could you remind, how do, how do I get to that? Send an extra credit folder. There's video. Where is it? Where extra is it? credit module. Oh, so I'll look for the extra credit module. Yeah, it's, it's a module. It's probably the last one. It says extra credit. Then you click. Okay. It, there's a video folder and then the assignment and then a Dropbox. Okay, I'll look for that. Thank you. You're more than welcome, sir. All right. Well, uh, have a great, great rest of the day. Have a great weekend. I'll see you all Monday. I'm going to try to save that first video, but I'll definitely post the, the remainder. And thank you.
Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye you,